halftime 42 to nothing is the score we go to Kaylee. Well coach Sunday you get shut out four days later you got 42 points on the board after the first half. What ignited this offense. Well, just executing. That's what we talked about. And we've been trying to do it all season, but we actually did in the first half all three phases. When you've got a lead like this, what did you tell your team about how they approach the second half? Press the gas pedal even harder. So it's 42 to nothing. The Raiders are going to get the ball to start the second half. Two hundred eighty three yards for Vegas in that first half and only eighty nine for L.A. Second half starts with a touchback. Now it's time for tonight's journey. It's presented by Hyundai. Forty two point lead largest Raiders halftime lead all time. It's the second largest in NFL history. No sacks tonight for the Chargers who had seven against O'Connell in that first game back in L.A. in week four. Four TD passes in the first half most by any player this season for Aiden O'Connell. And he starts here for the handoff. And about a, well, a two-yard gain that turns into a five-yard gain for Zamir White. I think the thing that stood out to, to I think a lot of people, including myself, would have been the, the play of that offensive line. I, I, I think coming into this game, Josh Jacobs is is down tonight. You got Andre James, the starting center, and Colton Miller, the left tackle, out. So they reshuffled things up front. And you got Khalil Mack in this Chargers defense. He said had seven sacks in week four. And you're worried, are they going to be able to run the ball? Is Aiden O'Connell coming off a game where they didn't score any points? Going to be back there, and Mack's coming after him again. And Man, it's been a completely different story. Second and six, play action, pass caught. Adams over the middle, first down up to the 47-yard line. You know, it's interesting because the headline story in the sports section of the Review Journal in Vegas today was, who's going to be the quarterback yeah. in tonight's game? Some people thought maybe it would be Garoppolo. Yeah, and, and when you come off a game where you get shut out, and, and really, let's face it, they've lost three in a row. This offense has just been reeling, and... It's only natural to assume, you know, they're going to go back to Garoppolo, but you give Antonio Pierce and this, this offensive staff a lot of credit. You know, there are a lot of new faces out here that are being asked to do some things once they moved on from Josh McDaniels. And give them credit. They put together a good plan and they, they, they executed. Perfect so far. Bouncing off tacklers and all the way to the 38 yard line goes Zamir White. Now, it's a combination here of, again, this offensive line continuing to do a good job. And White, who, I, again, I'm familiar with because of his days at, at Georgia, right guard pulls around, nice block. But I think you also have to add that the Chargers just not getting off of blocks. That, that started to become some something we saw from about the early part of the second quarter on and clearly is continuing here into the, into the second half. Play action. Moving to his left, buying time, pass incomplete. Intended for Jacoby Myers. Covered that time by Michael Davis. Second down and 10 for the Raiders. Keep in mind, he was sacked seven times. Six times alone by Khalil Mack. <laughs> First time they, they matched up. This time, Mack ends up going inside and, and instead of outside and that's what allowed him to kind of have that half roll away from where Mac was good job not only by the left tackle Munford but you saw Johnson the fullback also get involved the whole key is keep 52 out make someone else rush the quarterback and it's worked he's had all kinds of time they've done a great job of that tonight on every level that pass is incomplete and dropped by Austin Hooper you know, after, this, after those six sacks in the, in the first matchup, we thought, okay, now you got Munford on him. And Munford, you know, he's, he's not played a ton. He's, he's moved around from the right side to the left side. And Munford's done a heck of a job. You know, the, the second-year pro out of Ohio State hasn't had a lot of help. You know, they, and I think, the, I think the circumstances, having plus territory, throwing the ball on some early downs has, has really been smart. 
It's been a nice, again, a nice plan. And Aiden O'Connell looks like he's very comfortable with the attack tonight. Third and ten. Keep it on the ground. To the 33 yard line goes Abdullah, and then you get a flat coming in at the end of the play. A little jawing going on, on there with Davis and Abdullah. Ron Torbert ready to make the call. Abdullah came up grabbing his face mask, I and mean, we, we couldn't see it. There it is right there. Justin Hollins. Yeah, that's the discussion right now. You can see the motion by the officials. Torbert discussing it. Personal foul, face mask. Defense, number 56. Penalty 15 yards from the end of the play. Automatic first down. Good call. Good call, Nate. Correction, it's number 58. There you go. Number 58 on the face mask. Yeah, it's 58. It's Justin Hollins. And that moves the ball to the 18 yard line. So without Jacobs tonight, the Raiders have rushed for 100 yards. A little fake to the right side, and then he does go that way. He goes to Myers, and that'll set up a first down and goal at the seven yard line. You know, for those of you keeping score at home, this is the worst rushing offense in the NFL, and they're at over 100 yards running the ball against his Chargers defense. And when you run the football, it allows O'Connell to have the play action opportunities and they continue to try to mix it up and do a good job on, on first and 10 and trying to just get the ball out. It's the worst, you know, rushing situation, as you say, and without Jacobs. Without Jacobs. And a, and a line that's reshuffled. First and goal. McConnell caught. And he'll take it to about the four yard line as Zamir White makes that catch. Second down and goal. This is where you really, you know, I think Antonio Pierce, he's he's not letting up. 42 nothing. In his mind, it's 0 0. You know, don't forget that he's looking at this as an opportunity to showcase what he can do as a head coach, keep his team going, staying aggressive. Really tests you as a pro, doesn't it? I mean, it really. Oh yeah. I mean, you find out what you're made out of, and it's a tough set of circumstances for the Chargers just to continue to go out there like this. Second and goal. Myers is going to throw touchdown. Devontae Adams hauls it in. So Jacoby Myers, no stranger to throwing the ball. High school quarterback did it very often and with great success in New England. Touchdown number seven for the Raiders. Yeah, he went on that orbit motion earlier when he threw it, but he came from the left. This time he comes from the right. And I love to, to watch the job that, that Devontae Adams did in selling that. Yeah, you're right. He looks so comfortable, and it's obvious with his background of being a quarterback. Doesn't panic, doesn't hurry, baited the defender, made him come to him, feel, felt threatened that he may just run it in, pulled the defender to him, and Adams is all alone. You know, 42 throwing a wide receiver yeah. pass. Hey, I know, I know. Raiders should be, well, what can I tell you? The Chargers should be yelling mercy. Right On this Thursday night. Raiders enjoying every second of it. Chargers get the ball. This is Davis. To the 22-yard line, we go to Kaylee. Well, guys, we were surprised when we showed up to Raiders practice yesterday and Devontae Adams was nowhere to be found. He told me it was because he couldn't get out of bed yesterday until about 6 p.m. And anybody who's got kids can relate to how this story unfolded. He said his two daughters, who were both under four, 
just got over having the flu and it hit him next. He said it took IVs, vitamins, hydration, all of it to get him back on the field tonight. But you would never know how bad he said he was feeling yesterday by the way he's been playing tonight. Yeah, we may take some of that stuff too. Seven <laughs> catches for 94 <laughs> yards and a touchdown. Meanwhile, getting free is Joshua Palmer. And finally, something good happens for the Chargers. Josh Palmer, 79 yards. After missing five games and hanging his head, is Robertson. Well, Robertson shaking his head. It, it just looked like he and the, and the safety just not on the same page. Here he, here's the, the corner right here, and you see five motioning out. I think that creates a little bit of confusion by motioning him to the outside. You see Robertson, you see him look into the inside, wondering where that safety support might be. And for the first time all night, the Chargers are able to make a big play offensively. So second touchdown pass of six career through one last week. Meanwhile, the extra point is just barely good off the foot of Cameron Dicker. 49-7. So the Raiders, of course, the monster was from Al Davis. I was here nine years and, and until we really looked at it. I, I had forgotten he got to really go back to Rich Cannon when it comes to yep. quarterback play when the Raiders had some postseason success. It's 20 years ago. Yep. Cannon was the MVP of the regular season that year and goes to the playoffs. They get to the Super Bowl played in San Diego and that's the the year that John Gruden had been traded to Tampa Bay Gruden that had the team for four years Bill Callahan takes over Callahan gets the team in the Super Bowl but what happens they face Tampa Bay and John Gruden lifts the Lombardi trophy meanwhile in terms of the drafts as well it's been tough since 16, you got Joseph and Conley both out of the league. Miller's a starter, but he's hurt tonight, not playing. You got Ruggs and Arnett out of the NFL. Wilson's a rookie, so uh, not a lot of success when it comes to first round picks over the last several seasons. No, it, it's been a disaster. I mean, you, you look at these guys, a lot of these guys, they're, it's not that they're on different teams. They're out of, look at how many of them are out of the league. And you're talking about not mid round or late round picks. He's back. Six or seven years ago. Guys, the mic. Monday, Monday. Monday, Monday. Easy. Six is the mic. Six is the mic. Monday, Monday. From the 25. What did he? What did he have? Go, 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 go. On the ground, picking up about four yards. I, I think it's because I still, when I see that Raiders uniform, I still think of. John Madden and I think of some of the great teams with Marcus Allen and, I, and when I looked and I saw that they've been in two playoff games since tw since that Super Bowl Jim Plunkett I mean you think of some of those great teams here it's remarkable to think that that's all they've had in 20 years two playoff appearances. no question in the 90s weren't that good in this Fred Belitnikoff nice chat with the great wide receiver before the game tonight second down and six here let's go what it is the end of a couple. You know, you think of uh, so many people. You think Kenny Stabler, Daryl and Monica, the I, Mad Bomber. I think of Lester Hayes and the stick. Of course, I yep. mean that was great. That, that 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 time and that era. How long do you think it took Lester Hayes to clean up after <laughs> a game? <laughs> that stuff wasn't not, not easy to wash off. Third down and four. This is the franchise that started in the AFL in 1960, moved to LA, went back to Oakland, and now here. Third and four. Stepping up. The taken down, finally, in the backfield is Eric Kendricks, able to knock him down as he tried to escape in his fourth down. Well, this is set up by by Kenneth Murray. Watch what he does and just taking almost like setting a, a pick on this pass protection and it allows Kendricks to come off of his guy and eventually get that play. That, that, that's partners working together 
Bring in both the middle linebackers, occupy that left guard, freeze up Kendricks, and you get the sack. Cole to punt, his third boot, line drive kick. Bouncing. Picked up inside the 10 yard line by Davis. Smothered. Eight thirteen remaining in the third in Las Vegas. No, but I know when to get up and go to bed. Yes. I'm good at that. Like as soon as we get back to the hotel from the 10 yard line, Easton Stick throws it to the outside. Is Eckler no place to really go? Run out by Diablo at that point. Second down. Darius Davis had a rough night. The rookie out of TCU returning punts. He had to fumble deep in his own territory. This time, you know, he puts him in a tough spot here. You know that last punt by Cole, who leads the league in net, that won't hurt either. 65 yards and no return. And an 83 yard which resulted in a touchback last week. Second down and six. So set up a third down and five. Eckler gain a one. Let's lock in on 98 here. Now they, they'll move him around. From time to time, but a lot of times, obviously, he's set up to the offense's right, coming off the edge. See if the Chargers on this third down are going to chip or, or double team him or leave Pipkins on an island. Halfway mark of the third. Six throws caught, but short of the first down. Palmer cannot get free. <laughs> Tackled there by Jack Jones. Punt group comes in. So I said, let's watch 98. Watch this move of Pipkins to the inside and then the spin move off of that. I mean, it, it's, it's just unfair. Dips inside, gets the big tackle who's 330, 320 pounds inside off balance, and then spins out of that. And he doesn't come up with a sack, but he forces the ball out quick, and it's just as useful. Man, that guy is great. Scott, his fifth punt of the night. High booming kick. Fair catch call for made the 21 yard line by DeAndre Carter with six and a half to go. Still mathematically alive. 30 teams still mathematically alive this late into the season. Zamir White picks up about five. So the playoff picture as it looks right now in the American Conference, Baltimore. Miami, Kansas City, and Jacksonville division leaders at the season stop right now. Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and Indianapolis would be in as wild cards. Only the top seed gets a bye. What a race to see who's going to get that number one overall seed in the AFC. And don't forget Miami and Baltimore play each other in Kansas City. Look who they have left to go. There's a good chance they win their last four games. Good. The pressure. Meanwhile, in the other conference, that time the uh, pressure was put on by Austin Johnson. NFC, you've got San Francisco and Dallas right now, and Detroit and Tampa Bay. Despite a six and seven mark, you got the Eagles, the Vikings, and the Packers would all go to the playoffs if the season ended right now. How about that NFC South? Seems like every year it's like that, right? And again, we, yeah. And we have the Saints next week uh, in Los Angeles against the Rams, right? Saints and they have the Giants coming up this week. Rams have Washington at home. Third down and five here. Connell throws. It's caught. It's going to be a first down there. Michael Mayer scored a touchdown earlier. Makes his fourth catch of the night. It's a guy that even as a freshman in college, he looked about like that. I mean, he, he showed up at about 245, 250 pounds. He's just one of those guys that for three years in South Bend just you thought okay wait where's he going to go into the NFL and now that he's had a chance to get used to this system and get used to the speed and I think the complexity of NFL defenses seems to be really trending in a, in a great direction within this offensive structure and with Jacoby Myers and Devon Devonte Adams he's a real weapon in the middle O'Connell rolling keeps his eyes downfield that's incomplete. I see a guy wearing number 87 for the Raiders. Casper. Dave Casper. Yeah. The ghost. Ghost to the post. The holy roller. 
when you think about it, these two teams through the years speaking of that Mark Teitelman and Pierre Musa calling it right up for us what, what took you guys so long <laughs> Stabler back the pass into the game against San Diego were you were you calling this game no 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 I oh, was okay. in my bassinet for this game <laughs> okay. a little fumble there and then the, the ball is moved forward and winds up in the hands of Casper for the touchdown and created a rules change <laughs> he kicked that ball about uh, yeah. about 10 yards leave it to the Raiders in those years but that's well, that stopped the forward fumble yeah I think it started with Stapler really at the beginning of that after, play it did after you and Malibu Kelly Hayes were all over now <laughs> absolutely George Hill, the whole crew <laughs> yeah we, we've seen a few <laughs> but not that one third and eight God, this kid for a rookie, such great command. Looking sharp, throws caught short, first down, short of the first down. As Amir Abdullah makes that grab, and his fourth down. I think you know they're going to punt it away, which is fine. At this point, it's meaningless. But I think you can just go back to the development of this young guy and, and Antonio Pierce telling us, you know, he, he still needs to learn to pull the trigger and, and learn that you, you got to check it down. You know, if, if it's don't take the sack, check it down. Don't don't worry about always having to make a play. And I think you only the only way you learn that is you go through that as a young quarterback. And I think uh, this has been a great night for number four. Cole's punt. Bouncing out of bounds. That won't help his gross average here. Short punt. Bray Tucker for a touchdown. You can see him frustrated at times. And you can see these numbers six receptions, 105 yards, and two touchdowns. That's just in the first half tonight. So that's our next gen stats powered by AWS. On the outside, game of about five before. Isaiah Spiller has bumped out of bounds, second down. Each team coming in five wins, eight losses, mentioned at the very top. Chargers, minds of many, thought to be Super Bowl contenders. The Raiders not quite thought that highly of, but thought, you know, they brought Garoppolo in, they had the Russian champion in Jacobs, but yeah. not to be. Second down and five. The throws is caught just about at the line of the game. Never tries to get free. See where they spot it. And just coming in. Looks to be Skosh short. See yeah, a body language from ever. I mean, it, this is a this is a, players who are obviously very frustrated with the season, with the night. A lot of different things. You can see it from Spiller when he went out of bounds. You see it from Everett there. Look at that one for 25 on third and fourth down over the last two games. And finally, finally. Move those sticks. Quickly. No flags. First down. Two minutes left in the third. And that's almost unbelievable. Dean Spanos, um, he's had some good times and some very frustrating times. And tonight, obviously, is of the latter category. From the 31. Shoots it out here to Eckler. Breaks a tackle. Turns it into a nice run. And that should be a first down before he's tackled by Bilal Nichols. Patrick Graham told me uh, last night, just talking to him about the matchup, he had gotten the news that Keenan Allen was, was out of the game. And he said, you know, be before, when I thought Keenan Allen was in the game, he said, everything's going to run with a young quarterback, everything's going to run through him. Then they find out Keenan Allen's out. And he said, listen, I know Eckler's not had a great year, but now we, we got to lock in on 30. Not so much just in running game, but him catching the ball out of the backfield. We haven't seen a ton of it tonight, but that was the focus is make someone besides 30 beat us. Yeah, they have locked in on him. He will stick deep downfield, too deep and incomplete. Down there was Quinton Johnson. He was the number one pick, the rookie out of TCU, but he has not had a good year to this point. And if, and if you look at these receivers, it, there's just 
there's not a lot of production tonight. I know you got a young quarterback, and you get down early and becomes obvious what the play calling is, but I think they were hoping Palmer, I know he had the, the big touchdown play where they busted in coverage, but just have not, without Keenan Allen, just yeah. there's no one really to turn to on the outside with Mike Williams, who went down earlier in the year. Right, very early in the season, too. I mean, every team's had their share of injuries as Joshua Kelly is banged into the bench, takes a couple of the uh, chain gang guys with him. It'll be third down and four. They've also, you know, Joey Bose is another guy we have, again, that's on the defensive side. Yeah. That minus him. Talk about Williams. There's Justin Herbert done for the season. They'll get no sympathy from any other team, though. I mean, every, every team everybody's banged up. Game. Yeah, everybody's banged up. Totally at this point. Final minute of the period. Sick throws, and it's caught. And that'll be a first down. So Guyton is there. So after they were one for 25 on third and fourth, they pick up back to back third down conversions. And then that time you saw Stick get back, and even it's third down. I think he had a, a good idea based on the coverage that he saw where he wanted to go with the ball and got it out quickly. No huddle here. Stick looking. Look out from behind. And the ball is out. It's going to be ruled. It's, and it's alive and going to the end zone right now for what is ruled a touchdown is John Jenkins. He was popped by Malcolm Poots, who's had a gigantic night. That's going to end the quarter. Obviously, all scoring plays reviewed. But the bottom line is that Koontz continues to give the left tackle Rashawn Slater a tough time, which, again, I, I think all the attention's on the other side with Max Crosby, but instead it's the effort of Koontz. It's the effort of not giving up on that play, and he comes up with that big sack. You could you could see that Stick tries to avoid Crosby and doesn't even see Koontz, who comes all the way around to knock that ball loose. And how about the big fella Jenkins, the nose guard, coming up with a touchdown? Came in the back door. So Jenkins, a 34-year-old defensive tackle, 11th year in the league. Came from Miami, started every game. End of the third, 56 to 7 Vegas. Defensive tackle. I wonder how many times in his entire career he's picked up a fumble and had a chance to run it that far for a touchdown. He's still tickled down there. First season as a Raider, last two years with the Dolphins. Check him out again here. Yeah, this is great because we're going to show the speed of what he, what he's doing. Crosby forces Stick to step up, and then Coons comes around and, and ends up dislodging the ball. And here's the big man right here. He gets his hands on it. He sees a goal line in front of him. 14. Popped by Malcolm, who's had Just a gigantic night. But I know that go with the ball. Tyree Kill goes 22 or 23. He, he sh he's going through the whole story of what he just did. Put your treadmill at 17 miles an hour to make you appreciate what Big John Jenkins just did. Not as fast as Tyree could faster than Benny Hill. <laughs> Loss here, and a Butler makes that tackle. Downstairs, Kaylee, what you got? Guys, I think everybody in a Raiders uniform or wearing black and silver on the sidelines has made their way over to Jenkins to love up on him and help him celebrate that moment. A couple of the guys were yelling, we got to check the GPS. Check the GPS. You had to be going 20. They're going to be disappointed when I tell him he didn't hit 20 miles per hour. But, man, they thought he might have. 17. I mean, that's not terrible. And didn't need a pit stop. <laughs> Meanwhile, Will Clapp, the center, is now down in an injury timeout in Vegas. Well, this agonizing night for the Chargers continues as Will Clapp needs to be assisted off the field on the cart. Remember, Corey Lindsley was their starting center early in the season. He went on IR. Clapp has come in to start 10. And now you got Brendan Hymas. Number 64, he comes in to take that spot. Yeah, that, that, that was a big loss for this offensive line. Lindsley, one of the top centers out after three games. The second down and 13. Oh, baby. Unbelievable. Jack Jones. 
They do it again. I mean, there are bad dreams, and there are crazy bad dreams. And for the Chargers, it's been that kind of a night. I tell you, Jack Jones, who plays a lot more man, he, he just read this. When, when Eckler went in motion, he must have seen this in a short week, and he knew exactly what was coming. This is unbelievable. It's like he was in the huddle. He's Look at him jumping. He, he reacts quicker than anybody from the offense. It's like he knew that with that motion, this is the play they run to get it to 30, and he said, not on my watch. He just stepped right in front of it, one-hands it, and walks into the end zone. Most points the Raiders have ever scored. 63, and you have 14 and a half minutes left in the game. Most points the Chargers have ever given up. Remember, Jack Jones, you know, he, he's a guy that uh, has had to battle through. He's let go by the Pats. He's picked up here by Antonio Pierce, who coached him in high school at Long Beach Poly and at Arizona State. Believes in him, gives him another chance and another opportunity. And at Easton Stick, nothing he could do there. As soon as he read that, saw the formation, saw that pre-snap motion, it, it was a good, good indicator for him to jump it, and man, did he. You know, if you think, all right, Herbert's out, you put Stick in, who's the backup? The backup is a guy, Max Duggan, who's a rookie out of TCU, who was second to Caleb Williams in the Heisman balloting last year, but he was just all the way from the practice squad. He hasn't played a lick. Now they're, they're right now there's just not a lot of oops, a lot of options for this this Chargers team and at this point obviously other than just getting reps it, it, it obviously doesn't matter. Yeah. Meanwhile they, they just put up uh, the graphic that we told you about 63 points the most ever in Raiders history and that's the reason for but with the four, crowd. with 14 31 to go all they need is 10 more for the NFL record. Please. Only 10. Only <laughs> right one. No problem. It's just a big celebration. This is a team that was shut out last week against the Vikings. Tonight, a very different story for Devontae Adams, Jack Jones, the entire Raiders team. Chargers five turnovers and burned after every one of them. Builder. Remember Mills Lane, the great referee? Sure do. Yep. He would come in and go, referee stops contest. He'd wave it off right now. Second and nine. It's like Diablo is down. Yeah, Divine Diablo. Man, that's taking advantage of takeaway, right? I mean, that's pretty good percentages. Oh, five takeaways, five yep. touchdowns. So you go from one game where you just want to hide right. from everybody to the complete opposite end of the spectrum if you're a Raiders. And now it's the Chargers. Well, as we said, going to commercial off the city trip, it's the NFL where anything happens. That's why they have all these big buildings out here. It's impossible to predict what's going to happen. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> First charge time out of the half. Las Next Vegas, week. This is a 30 second time Home out. game. Yeah. Hey, how about that? Yeah. The Saints and the Rams. Rams trying to hang in that playoff hunt. They're there right now They're trying to get the 500. If they beat Washington this week. And we'll kick it off next week at 8.15. Free game at 7 o'clock Eastern from SoFi. Allegiant Stadium. Well, Vegas has become um, a sports mecca. Remember, this is the home of who would have ever believed it? The, the Stanley Cup champions. Yeah, and they've been good pretty much from, from right, the, the right jump. The yeah. Yeah, beneficiaries of a very uh, lucrative expansion draft. Speaking of that, the Spiller. So you got the Golden Knights. This town loves 
their champions, Stanley Cup champions. We've got the Raiders relocated here in 20 when they built the stadium. Grand Prix was held here recently in November. The Aces owned by Davis, two championships. Super Bowl will be played here in February. The A's are moving here. New stadium opened in 2028. And a guarantee on the NBA outlook, they in Seattle will be the next expansion franchises in all likelihood. Stick throws, it's caught. And taking a pop right there is Stone Smart. Isn't it amazing how far professional sports have come with this city. Sure. I mean, it was taboo. You wouldn't want to talk about it. You wouldn't want to even think about, yep. you know, sports gambling and professional sports and everything right. that is associated with. You never would have ever envisioned there'd be franchises here. And now, it's totally every, embraced. everybody's it's coming totally in. Totally embraced. Yep. Ahead is Joshua Tilly. So the Chargers will go home. Their next game is a Saturday game against Buffalo. Then they go to Denver and they end up at home against Kansas City. Ain't easy. What a night for that guy. 241 yards. Four touchdowns. I think he has secured the starting spot. Second and nine. Reversing directions up to the 41. Meanwhile, the remaining schedules, as we say right there, Chargers Buffalo at Denver, Kansas City. Meanwhile, the Raiders go to Kansas City, go to Indianapolis, and with Denver right here. And realistically, their only chance, it's a great night, but their only chance is that they're probably going to have to sweep the three remaining games that they have and, and then need some help yep. sitting there at nine and eight. And it's tougher in the AFC, too. The AFC, now, you know, very heavy in terms of the dominant teams this year. Mm -hmm. the NFC's a, a, a different story. Stick. Gets out, runs, slides to a stop at the 48-yard line, first down. Told you his legs would be a factor. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> Only took uh, 48 uh, yeah. minutes. I, I mean, that's what I thought we would see tonight is his ability to, to improvise and scramble and try to get first downs. Very different from what you're used to seeing with Justin Herbert. But as we know, this game got away from him and, and his Chargers team in a hurry. Down, down 21 nothing in the first quarter. Stick shoots it out. Juggle incomplete. Never had control of it. Stereos Davis hit there by Tyler Hall. Man, this crowd smells blood. Yeah, they're not letting up just no. like the Raiders team is. Not it? at all. Like the Roman Coliseum right now. Second and ten. Caught, running his way. Eckler, he picks up a first down. You know, we talked about the backup quarterbacks and O'Connell having a super night. You can go back to Monday night, Tommy DeVito. You go back to Will Levis at Tennessee. And they got uh, O'Connell. Yeah, and, and, and you could go to Jake Browning. I mean, it looked like Cincinnati was done right. after Joe Burrow went down. He has the big game in Jacksonville and follows it up with another win last week. So, you know, I, I think there's, there's a premium on depth on offensive line play in the NFL and obviously that backup quarterback. No game. Spiller. What we really need is an offensive line like teams offensive line next to these quarterbacks because I think it's a combination this year in the NFL of backup quarterback play and and, and just seeing offensive line decimated seems like every week. Stick throws and that's Palmer right there. 
Joshua Palmer holds it in. Now the zone coverage, you got to be able to layer that ball in over top of the linebackers. And what a great job of showing what he's capable of, of throwing this football. And this is the area that he's improved the most in his five years. Came into the NFL as, as a really good athlete and a playmaker. And he'd be the first one to tell you how much he's worked on that aspect of his game. And that was uh, one of the first chances we've had a chance to see him get the ball thrown downfield and had to be very accurate, and it was. Stick to the end zone, and that is hauled in for a touchdown by Alex Erickson. I tell you, you look at Stick's numbers, like pretty good 20 of 28, 200, 242 yards, two touchdowns. Yeah. That's almost yeah. a long way from being the long story. way. A long way. You know, the motion once again helps him. When, whenever it comes over, watch the safety. You get motion here, watch the safety come down, and that changes the coverage. And he has to see that as the ball is being snapped, so it opens up that. That glance route, that, that kind of that, that skinny post there for a touchdown. So good job of seeing that after the motion. Tough thing to do with it for a guy without a lot of experience, but he saw it cleanly and made a great throw. Extra point by Dicker is good. Eight and a half to go in the fourth. 63-14. Who would have figured?